Hello, this is Steve from SDR Play. In a previous video, we talked about setting up SDR Connect for networking. Please see the link in the description. In this video, we're going to talk about a worked example whereby we'll be setting up a server on a Raspberry Pi and then connecting to it from other computers, both on the local network and remotely. First up, we'll go through installing the software on the Pi and then actually running the software to start the server. Then we'll look at configuring the clients both on your local LAN and remotely via the internet. So let's get started by setting up the server. Essentially all we have to do is install the software then run SDR Connect as a server and the only thing we need to note is the port number in use. I have previously downloaded the software to a memory stick, plugged it into the Pi, and then transferred the installer file over to the desktop. To continue with the installation, I now need to open a terminal window from the upper menu bar. Next, I want to change directory to the desktop. Now I can type the list command ls and see the contents of the desktop. Now I can highlight the name of the installer file to save typing later and then from the edit menu I can select copy. To make the file executable I have to type in chmod755 and then the file name. I can easily bring down the file name by hitting the edit menu and then paste. Then hit enter. Now we can run the installer. We type in the command dot slash and then paste in the file name again. Hit enter and then follow the prompts on the screen as the installer does its thing. Hit the space bar to step through the license agreement. Again follow prompts until the installer completes running. When asked for the install location just press enter and then type Y to continue with the installation. Now to run the program, we must first CD across to the install location of SDR Connect. So now we type in slash opt slash SDR Connect followed by enter. Once again we can use the ls command and see that we're in the right place and now we want to start the server. To do this we type dot slash SDR connect followed by some command line options the most important of which is dash dash server. We can then follow that with dash dash port equals 50,000 to specify a particular port number although by default 50,000 will be set. Now press enter and the server will start running. When the server starts you'll see various information coming up on the screen which indicates uh, various device parameters. You can see the serial number of the RSP that's connected. In my case it's my trusty RSP2. For more information on the various command line options please refer to the SDR Connect networking video linked to in the description. And that's it. The server is now up and running and waiting for you to connect to it. First, I'll demonstrate how to set up a client running on the same network as the server. For this, we are going to use a Windows 11 machine. If you know me, don't worry. I'm running this in a virtual machine on my Mac. I do have some Windows PCs, but none of them will run Windows 11, ironically. So just open up SDR Connect. In the device list in the upper left, you'll see there are no local RSPs connected. So we need to set up a server. Click on the three dots, edit server list. Click on the plus to add a new server. Then go down and give it a name. We'll call it Pi 400 Local. Next, go down to the IP address field 
and put in the local IP address of your server. In my case, it's 10.0.0.128. Finally, check the port number matches what you set up on the server and click on Save. Click on the Refresh button next to the device list and sure enough, there's Pi 400 Local. You see you have a choice of IQ or audio. We will select IQ because we're on the local LAN and then press the play button. And there you have it, signals. We can click on the device settings gear wheel and you see the various options for the device. You can set sample rate, which antenna port is in use. Uh, you'll see no high Z on this because we're above 30 megahertz. In fact, you have control over the remote RSP just as if it was connected locally. Please note that only the first client connected has full control over the device connected to the server. Additional clients will have that option grayed out. Now let's talk about setting up a remote client. This will be connected via the internet. So in addition to the normal settings, you will have to set up port forwarding on the router. And in addition to the port number, you will need to know the WAN address of the local network. To find your WAN address or wide area network, you can get that from your router settings, or you can use a browser by looking at whatismyip.com. Also in the router, you will need to set up port forwarding. You need to specify the server computer name and the port number you wish to use to connect. Again, here we're using 50,000. For this demonstration, I'll be using my trusty MacBook. Since we are making an off-site connection, first we need to connect to whatever internet is available locally. I have picked a generic Xfinity uh, hotspot. I've already installed SDR Connect, so I can just go to my Applications folder. And I can open up the program. And since I don't have any RSPs connected to this MacBook locally, the uh, device list is empty. So now we need to put in the uh, information to get to the Pi 400 server back on my home network. So we click on Other Actions, and then Edit Server List, and then Plus to add a server. We can give it a display name. I'll call it Pi 400 Remote. And we previously noted my WAN IP address, and that's going to be 24-9-255-111. And the port number we want to use is 50,000. Save that, and then we can close the edit window. We now go up to refresh the device list. And there we see our Pi 400 remote. And again, we have two versions available. Since we're operating over the internet to save bandwidth, we will select the audio version. We can then click on play. And sure enough, there are some signals. We can uh, get right on frequency there. And uh, we have full control over the remote RSP, which is an RSP2. So we need the audio there. So, as I say, it's an RSP2, so we have control over antenna A or B. The high Z input doesn't show up because we're tuned to 99.9 uh, .9 megahertz, which is above the 30 megahertz limit for uh, antenna uh, for the high Z input. We have full control over RF gain. If I turn it all the way up, we'll probably get an overload. And if I close that window, you see the overload warning is there. So we just need to back off a few clicks on the RF gain and the overload warning is gone. So now, effectively, we're using the RSP2 as if it was connected directly to this MacBook. And uh, you can set up multiple servers, um, either different servers on your home network or to friends servers operating on other networks. There is more information on setting up remote networking in uh, a, another video I did called SDR Connect Networking. So that's it, and uh, we're up and running in our coffee shop. Meanwhile, back at the server, we can see in the terminal window 
It will indicate to us whenever an external client is connected. The first couple of entries there are when we connected and then disconnected a local client. And then below that, we see when we connected and uh, disconnected uh, across the internet. Very useful information so you can see what's going on at the server end. It's probably pretty hard to see on that uh, previous slide. So here's a, an expanded view of showing uh, the various clients being connected and disconnected to the server. So in summary, first start the server running on the Pi. Note the port number that's in use. If you're then on your local LAN, you'll just need to know the IP address of the server on that LAN. If you're coming in through the internet, you'll also need to know the WAN IP address of the server network, and you will have to have port forwarding set up on your router. There is further information available if you refer to the SDR Connect networking video a link to which is in the description of this video. As always, thank you for watching our videos. We hope you found it useful. For further information and the latest updates on SDR Connect, please visit our website at sdrplay.com. 73.